Good morning and Happy New Year to all of our Stalls TV Morning Show viewers. I'm Courtney. And I'm Zach. Happy New Year to you, Thank you. Courtney. Happy New Year. Did you have a good holiday? I did, yeah. Okay, great. Hopefully all of our viewers out there did as well. Um, we left off last year giving away two heat presses. We gave away a Fusion heat press along with the Printmore package, and we gave away a Max clam press for our first annual Stall -a Days giveaway. <laughs> So we appreciate everybody who entered that, participated at the Stalls TV forums. We invite you to continue the conversation there uh, at stallstv.com on our forums as well. But today, moving into the new year, we're moving into one of the most popular investments in the months of January, February, March. How do we know this? Basically from our sales here at Stalls and one of our sister companies in Printables Warehouse, vinyl cutter sales spike in January, February, and March. So today, we ran a poll uh, before, thanks for answering that. It looks like um, most of you already own vinyl cutters. Today's episode is still going to be helpful for you because we're going to go through the top 10 weeding tips. Right. We are going to talk about how to get started with a vinyl cutter, which can also help you get started in 2016 with the one that you already have. And then we're also going to review a little bit for those of you who don't already have a vinyl cutter, some of the reasons why you get into it, maybe refresh your memory on why you purchased or invested in that vinyl cutter in the first place. So that's where we are going uh, today. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, so um, when it comes, I guess, starting out, we'll talk about the value you get from purchasing a, um, and investing in a vinyl cutter. And, mm -hmm. you know, we get a lot of decorators that come to us, like you would mentioned, especially at this time of year, um, and they're looking to expand or start a business. And, of course, vinyl cutting is where they start or they see a lot of information on. But there's a lot of um, mishaps and some miscommunication where people are kind of afraid of the vinyl cutter. They're afraid right. of um, not only the investment, but of course, adding a cutter or a printer, anything like that into your shop is automatically terrifying for a lot of people because they think it's hard to run. There's a lot of com um, computer communication issues. Mm -hmm. There may be some training concerns. So there's a lot of stuff there that we hear. Um, and really, vinyl cutters are, in my opinion, one of the easiest things to operate aside from the heat press. There's not a whole lot you need to do to it. It's pretty much a plug and play and there's a lot of value that it brings to business owners. Um, one of the largest values of course is the return you get for such a small investment. Um, so we have a document that we actually have available at stallstv.com. So at stallstv.com we just recently launched a resources page where you'll see a lot of documents like this being added in the coming months. Um, but the Vinyl Cutter RI is one um, that's really beneficial. So, Zach, do you want to kind of review this with the audience? Yeah, sure. So, for those of you who have already invested in a vinyl cutter, did you know that as little as five yards of material can actually make you $500 in profit? And this is how it breaks down. Out of five yards of material, you can make about 35 10 by 7 designs to apply to shirts. If your average t-shirt cost is a buck 92, your design cost is approximately 85 cents, depending on the heat transfer of vinyl that you're using and your labor and your overhead for weeding, which we'll talk a little more about later, is about 77 cents. So your cost to produce a finished t-shirt with single color vinyl is about $3.54. If you are taking advantage of the personalization that a vinyl cutter offers you, you can sell that shirt for upwards of 18 bucks. So if you can pull that off uh, in your market, you're looking at $500 in profit for every five yard roll. So really, if you're cutting and selling four five yard rolls, you've paid for your vinyl cutter already. Right, and one thing I'm noticing when I'm looking at this paper is 35 shirts looks like a pretty small amount of shirts to be um, heat printing, and really that's one of the huge benefits of having a vinyl cutter and a heat press is mm -hmm. that um, personalization, that low quantity, so where you may be offering um, just screen printing right now or even just embroidery, it offers a whole new range of the size of jobs you can do, the personalization and being able to do that quick turn in-house. Yeah, so we see that you have, by investing in a vinyl cutter, the ability to offer personalization. We see that you have the ability to print low quantities. You can also achieve a lot of special effect finishes with a vinyl cutter. You can take advantage of a lot of the materials that we sell here at Stalls, uh, like flock, glitter right. flake. You have uh, neon finishes, neon colors, metallics, those types of things. A vinyl cutter gives you the ability to use special effect finishes. Right, and so, and even with special effect finishes, that kind of expands. That's where a lot of people make their return and their money on their machine is the amount of things they can print. So being able to not only print basic finishes but glitters and metallics and all of those and the amount of fabrics you can print. So you can right. now print performance fabrics and nylons and there are, um, when, you're, when you purchase the vinyl cutter there feels like 25, 30, it feels like a hundred different materials you can choose from. Yep. Um, obviously you don't need that many so we don't want to scare you away from those but the point is there's a lot of versatility. There's a lot of different items you can print with that vinyl cutter. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, not only can you print a wide variety of special effects, you can print a wide variety of fabrics. You can also customize on demand to reduce turnaround time. And we've talked in previous episodes about how to inventory vinyl, uh, a just-in-time inventory, and we'll talk a little bit later about what some of those most popular colors of material are that we recommend that you inventory. But you can reduce turnaround time uh, and also charge for rush orders. So you can begin charging for rush orders if you have the material in the back. Your customer doesn't have to know right. that you already have the material there. If they need a two-day turnaround or a one-day turnaround, you can charge uh, that rush order fee. And that especially comes into play on team uh, uniforms, team name and number uniforms. The uh, vinyl cutter was kind of built. The first material mm -hmm. made for heat transfer for vinyl cutters was designed for sports jerseys. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, obviously being able to cut names and numbers is a huge benefit. That was where vinyl cutting really started. But in my opinion, with um, the industry, that's the most durable way to decorate a team uniform if you're decorating for contact sports. So um, Stahl's manufactured cat cut thermofilm for the vinyl cutter, specifically for custom cutting names and numbers for jerseys. And the nice thing is, um, what we're telling you here is, if it makes sense for your business, you should invest in a vinyl cutter. It allows you to do this quick turn. Um, but if you get into a pinch where you need to sell more products and you don't have time to do a lot of the cutting, mm -hmm. Stahl's can do a lot of these, cut a lot of these materials like the numbers and even custom designs for you so you don't feel like you're strapped to that cutter and that's the only way you can get these designs. Right, exactly. So if, if you get a lot of orders here in March coming up for baseball season and you don't want to spend all day Saturday in the shop <laughs> cutting uh, those designs, you can send it out to stalls. You can cut what you want and go sell more uh, and all you have to do is heat press it with that uh, Hotronics heat press that you have. Okay, so if you haven't invested in a vinyl cutter, it's something that you're considering. Uh, just to give you one more idea on return on investment, when we held our Stalls TV open house here at the studio back in July, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, probably over 100 different customers come in, and we polled them all as they were here, like we poll you before uh, the morning show, about what their vinyl cutter is worth to their business. And the average answer was somewhere between thirty to sixty thousand dollars in sales is what their vinyl cutter wow. is worth to the business, and that was across team name and numbers. That was T-shirts. That was across the board. But the average business owner who has a vinyl cutter can count on thirty to sixty thousand dollars in sales just from that one piece of equipment. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely worth the uh, two thousand dollar investment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So. If you're thinking about getting started or if you're thinking about revamping your cutting business and you want to know how to get started in 2016, let's talk a little bit about those tips for getting started. What does somebody need to get started vinyl cutting? Well, the vinyl cutter is right. essential, so we've got that. And the vinyl cutters, luckily, like I said, they're pretty much, a lot of them are plug and play. They come with a lot of the tools you need to get started. Mm -hmm. So they'll come with the um, software you need to install your cut drivers. They come with the cords um, that you need to, the USB cords to plug the cutter in. Aside from that, you really just need um, some extra blades, which will talk about the importance of sharp blades for accurate cutting, but I always recommend a pack of blades, um, an easy weeding tool or a weeder tool to get you started, and really just your materials and t-shirts. So it's pretty simple, easy investment. Okay, so material, artwork, blades, and some miscellaneous accessories. Yep. Um, we should probably, we, we can actually break down a little bit about which materials you should invest in depending on what you want to decorate. Do you want to tell us a little bit uh, about that? I think we have another document that we can show you here. Yeah, we can show that up on the screen, but you know, when you start looking into vinyl cutting, there are somewhere around, uh, you know, like I said, 25, 30 different materials, but you can really simplify that depending on what you're decorating. So again, what you're seeing on the screen here is another resource that can be downloaded um, from stallstv.com if you want to go back and view this later at your shop. But the, it basically walks through the top four materials you need to get started. So if you're looking to print t-shirts, I always recommend CAD Cut Fashion Film. It's thin, lightweight, cuts very easily, weeds very easily for all detailed designs. And then we also went through our sales at stalls and we saw what are the top colors that people invest in that they buy when they buy their vinyl cutter. Um, with t-shirts we saw white, black, red, neon pink, and neon green were actually at the top of our list, which neon surprised me because I always think they go back to the 80s, mm -hmm. but you know, this is over an like, extended period of time, so we're seeing a lot of people purchasing these neon colors and it's a very popular um, trend and something a lot of people should stock for, for quick turnaround as well. Yeah, we definitely see that in the fashion film, which is designed for t-shirt decoration, which kind of follows fashion, mm -hmm. hence the name uh, fashion film. So the t-shirt decoration really follows the fashion trends. However, the next material that you're looking at there is our CAD cut thermofilm. And thermofilm, again, the original CAD cut material was developed specifically 
for contact sports, for football, and you can put it on other sports jerseys um, as well. And you see a difference in the colors. White, black, and red, still the most popular, but you're also picking up gold and navy, which are very common when it comes to athletics. So high schools, a lot of high schools have those colors as their team colors, which is why we see the difference there. Yeah, it's not surprising you're seeing white and black across the board on all of these materials. But like I always tell people, if you're stocking fashion film for spirit wear designs or team uniforms for your local school, you're going to be printing that. You know, look at what their school colors are because you're likely going to have people coming into your shop wanting maybe maroon and gold if that's your school color. So you want to have those products on hand. Yeah, and I think we see as we move into the next material, Premium Plus, that um, you have a similar trend on the athletic colors, not so much fashion, because the Premium Plus material is designed specifically for application onto those performance fabrics that require low heat. Yep, exactly. So another white, black, red, and then added the royal and the navy, which are always popular colors with all of our materials, royal, navy, um, and Kelly Green as well. Yeah, and then lastly, we see the Glitter Flake numbers. Glitter Flake remains our fastest growing, <laughs> fastest selling material. The trend isn't going away uh, anytime soon. So if you're getting started with vinyl cutting or if you want to stay on trend in 2016, you need to invest in some glitter flake material. Yeah, and I think you'll find as you're using your vinyl cutter that you're probably going to use a mixture of at least two of these, if not three, or maybe all of these items in your shop mm -hmm. as you start to expand your reach. If you're going to be doing cotton t-shirts mostly, mm -hmm. um, or custom t-shirts, you may find fashion film and glitter flake is a perfect fit. Likewise, you may find that the performance wear with premium plus and team mm -hmm. uniforms with thermofilm are a good choice. So it depends on your business model for sure. Okay. so. We're trying to help you here on what materials you should invest in for your cutter for 2016 if you already have one or if you're just getting started. To actually choose the right vinyl cutter for your business, I would recommend watching our vinyl cutter buying guide that you can find at stallstv.com as well. It will walk you through all the different features of the cutters, whether you want one that is under $1,000 or under $2,000. Those are kind of the two main categories. And the video really goes into detail about what you should look for, and it all depends on what you want to decorate. However, the same challenge exists no matter uh, if you go with a cutter under $1,000 or under $2,000 is artwork. Yeah. And it's the scariest thing for most people who aren't graphic designers. If you've heard the words Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator and you've shuddered, I do <laughs> the same you. thing. Yeah, this is me. This is me. So what are some of the tools that uh, our viewers can use to deal with artwork for vinyl cutting. Yeah, so luckily there are tools now that are available aside from just clip art packages um, that you can purchase to make it easier for vinyl cutting. So when you look and you do research on vinyl cutting, or maybe if you've just gotten into it, you've noticed the word vector, um, which, is an in, which is one of those words that unless you're using Corel Draw Adobe Illustrator and you're in the graphics world, you probably have no idea what it is. Right. Um, I came here with no graphic knowledge, and so when they said vector to me um, five years ago, I it went straight over my head. I had no idea what that meant. Um, but basically that means it's able to be cut on your vinyl cutter. And luckily now um, it stalls. We talk about it a lot on the morning show and it stalls TV. Mm -hmm. The free online design software cadworkslive.com is a huge resource now for decorators because um, it allows you to create vector art very easily. It's simple, um, has a ton of clip art, fonts, just a really, really great robust tool. Yeah, and if you watched our trend report last Wednesday for 2016, CADWorks um, we'll be getting some enhancements. I don't necessarily want to call it an overhaul, but there's going to be a lot more features that are available to you that mirror Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator. So if you are more advanced in graphic design, CADWorks is going to be able to give you more tools to use and more free clip art uh, that you can use. And there's also some business, um, business production tools in there as well. More of that, if you want to learn more about it, you can visit cadworkslive.com. Uh, or you can watch our trends report from for 2016, which sh should be posted on stallstv.com very soon, if not already. Yep. Okay, so we've talked about the materials to get started. We've talked about artwork and how CADWorks Live can help us get started, whether we have an art background or not. Mm -hmm. What about um, that little most important <laughs> part of the vinyl cutter that actually does the cutting, the blade? The blade. So it's not the cord or anything, the blade's the most important thing I think so. to that vinyl cutter. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Um, and that's funny because, you know, people don't even take, they take that little tiny tool for granted mm -hmm. um, and really how much it can change your cutting and how easy the second step, which is weeding, is for your business. So shortly we're going to go over some tips for weeding yep. and help make it easier. But if your cut isn't good or you're overcutting or undercutting your material, it, it really doesn't matter how you weed, you're right. going to have trouble in that next step and end up with wasted material and it's a mess. So what we want to do is talk a little bit about the importance of the blade. Um, so one is keep it sharp. 
and damage free, which sounds yep. pretty easy, um, but this blade is so small and the tip of it's so small that mm -hmm. really you have to be very careful in how you set it down, where you put it. Um, that's why if, if you have a vinyl cutter yet, uh, or right now, you'll notice when you get them, they're usually packaged with some kind of plastic around the blade tip, yep. and that's because we want to make sure they're kept without any type of damage on them. So that's key. Um, second, I guess one of the most important things is how you extend your blade on your mm -hmm. blade holder. So a lot of the times what um, a lot of decorators and I've gone into a lot of shops I know you have as well and yep. you've seen the blade that's extended um, out about halfway which to where you would be able to actually um, you know be able to fill it pretty deep there and it would cut all the way through your cutting strip and this actually it's like a natural progression if something's not cutting you just think we'll just yep. extend the blade a little bit more and cut a little bit deeper but you really never want to change this you want to extend this about a half a credit card thickness to where you can barely see it, barely feel it, um, and never touch that. Um, if it's not cutting your material because it's thicker or you need a higher um, force, then the only thing you ever change is the down force on your vinyl cutter. And so that's mm -hmm. important to keep in mind um, as you're using your cutter and your blades and all of those tools with your machine. So aside from that, um, always keep an extra pack of blades yeah. and tools mm -hmm. on hand because they mm -hmm. do um, dull pretty quickly, especially if you're cutting some specialty stuff like the glitter. So mm -hmm. definitely doesn't hurt to keep that pack on hand when you buy your cutter or just always keep them fresh. Yeah, and that really comes into play as well, knowing which blade is the right blade to use for your particular material. And we actually had a, a few questions in our last broadcast uh, about that. But a 45 degree blade um, with a carbide tip is going to work for most of your materials. When you get into flock and some mm -hmm. other thicker materials, we do recommend upgrading to a 60 degree blade. I say upgrading just because it's a little bit more expensive uh, for the 60 degree blade. So keep both on hand and use the right one for um, the right material. And then we want to talk about test cutting just a little bit as well. So any cutter that you buy, any cutter that you invest in, any cutter that you have should have a test cut feature. And that is just a feature that's built into the machine that gives you the ability to test a cut without wasting a whole bunch of material. You get a one inch by one inch square or circle depending on the brand of cutter that you have. And it gives you the ability just to test it to where you're not going to waste a bunch of material when you send your job. So always test cut ahead of time with your blades. Very important, absolutely. Okay, so I did want to talk about your holiday a little bit. <laughs> is there any particular gift that you received or that you gave that was interesting or important to you? No good stories. No, a lot of clothes. I got an iPad, some real fun, exciting okay. stuff. Yeah, but nothing too... Did uh, you get the iPad Pro? No, I got the Mini. I like the little... The Mini. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the Pro's really big, isn't it? It comes is. with the... You can yeah. get the keyboard and all that stuff. Well, I bring that up to tell you a Christmas story. <laughs> all right. We, we love your stories. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. So, my son has a friend in grade school. He's in second grade. And his friend is really, really disturbingly into history in second grade. So for President's Day, he dressed up like Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he d he's just into historical things. Um, so my son wanted to get him something for Christmas. My wife went out and found a t-shirt that was decorated with Abraham Lincoln on it. And there was a saying on it. It said that was so four score and seven years ago. Well, working at stalls, and working in the decorating industry. When you walk into a store or when you see a t-shirt, you always want to see how it was decorated. So I picked it up off the table before it was wrapped up and I saw clearly that it was a vinyl decoration, heat transfer vinyl. And I, I took a picture of it because something just didn't seem right with it. So we're going to show you the picture, viewing audience, and see if you can see what is not right about this picture of Abraham Lincoln. Take a good look. And if you look at his ear, Something strange there. I see extra adhesive, and it looks like a piece that is not weeded out on the ear. So what we're going to do is give you some weeding tips. I was really disappointed with this, and I don't know if the average consumer is going to notice that when they get a t-shirt from somebody who decorates with vinyl. If anybody noticed it, if you've ever forgotten to weed something out and shipped it out to a customer, that's what I received uh, from a company and was a little, little disappointed. Um, so what we're going to do is give you our top 10 weeding tips, which will also be published on stallstv.com. So we're going to shoot over to Courtney at our weeding table. There she is. You got a close-up of her. <laughs> All right. And we're going to walk through quickly our top 10 tips for weeding CAD cut materials. And this was actually put together 
uh, by Bob Robinson, who's out giving education at the ASI Orlando show right now. So tip number one is to pull into the cavities. And the cavity we define is the open area of a letter. So it would be the open side of those letter E's that you're looking at. So when you pull into the cavities, you can see that the material weeds off pretty easily. Courtney, if you can pull from the other direction, you see you're going to get a lot of breakage on the vinyl. And that's not necessarily a problem with the vinyl, but the weeding technique that we use. So when you pull into the cavities, you can actually reduce your weeding time, which uh, as most of you know with vinyl cutters, weeding probably takes more time than the actual cutting on the machine. At least you have to be involved or one of your operators do. Tip number two, we want to use weed borders to control small areas of a larger design. And the example that we're going to show you here is a trademark example for a logo. So Courtney's going to weed away uh, some of the excess here. And you're actually going to see a small box appear uh, on that particular design. And there's more to be weeded in there. So what that does is it eliminates our risk of pulling up any fine detail in the design that may be uh, troublesome when weeding. So we added a weed border inside of that particular design to achieve that fine detail on the letter R. Number three, use a flat area to weed on. Courtney's actually using a music stand that we're weeding on uh, for today's purposes, but a large flat table is probably the best way to weed. We run into those issues when we're at a trade show and we're trying to show you how awesome CAD cut material is, and then we try and weed on top of our cutter, and it takes a little longer than we'd like. So use a flat area to weed on. Tip number four, use a Stahl's Easy Weeder. Um, the Stahl's Easy Weeder makes weeding uh, quite simple. And you can actually stack your weeding scraps on this weeder to increase or decrease your production time. Tip number five, while Courtney's showing you how to stack those scraps, is discard those scraps away from the table. And what that gives you the ability to do is not get those scraps back on your sticky carrier sheet. Um, to where you have to weed it a second or even a third time. So discard those away from the table. Tip number six, weed the interior cavities of letters first on pressure sensitive or sticky materials. Again, very similar uh, to the discard the scraps away from the table. You don't want those interior cavities to stick to your sticky material because you'll end up weeding them again. So weed those interior cavities first. Tip number seven, hold the easy weeder at an angle. This just makes grabbing the ends or pieces of your material much easier. So hold your stall's easy weeder at an angle. Tip number eight, secure a long edge of material to prevent breakage. So that's basically just putting your hand on the long end of the material to where it's secure and holding down while you're weeding away your excess. Tip number nine, and this is one where you use our scrap in the materials that we ship to you, and that is use a pink liner to mask weeded designs for storage. Courtney's going to show you that liner here. This pink liner actually comes in your shipments from our warehouse as the excess packaging material to avoid damage. You can actually use this to store your designs and move them around your shop or just to store them to where you're not getting dust and debris back on your designs that can transfer onto your items when you heat press them. And tip number 10, keep your scissors clean to trim apart the designs. So those of you who have done a lot of cutting, weeding, uh, and clipping designs know that a pair of clean scissors makes a world of difference in your production environment. So Courtney, thanks for that. Of those yeah. 10 tips, which one do you find to be the most helpful or save you the most time? Always number one, pulling inside those cavities because it just saves so much time in weeding. Yeah, okay, mine is um, just getting an easy weeder. I've tried it with tweezers. I've tried it with an X-Acto blade. The X-Acto knife's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, the, the Easy Weeder's just, just much easier for me because you can stack those interior cavities on there and take advantage of a lot of the other tips uh, that we gave. So if you haven't already, if one didn't come with your cutter, I would highly recommend this, I think it's $17, to invest in an Easy Weeder. It will save you a ton of production time. So that's it for today's show. Next week, Josh will be with you uh, giving us decorating trends? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be covering decorating trends for 2016 next week with Josh. We appreciate you tuning in today, and hopefully uh, we've set you in the right direction for 2016 with your vinyl cutter. I'm Zach. I'm Courtney. Thanks for watching.